Twitter song. So I got to see what lyric I got to use. Oh, yeah. What's the song going to be about? No, oh, no, you'll see. All right. All right. We're live. I'm roll. All right. Welcome to the uh, April 16th version of Lunchables presented by Branded Sports. Uh, my name is Steven. You're probably wondering who the heck I am. So uh, I'll give a quick introduction Steve before Stats. we jump right in. Yeah, Steve Stats, as uh, Joe likes to call me. So Joe had the great insight to uh, hire a uh, gambling and data viz guy about a week before the quarantine uh, started. So my Visionary. main objective, <laughs> yeah, exactly, great timing. So my main objective was to you know jump into the probably March Madness, NBA playoffs, a little bit of college football preview, jump into fantasy football, but instead I'm just uh, kind of twiddling my thumbs, trying to wrap my head around what the heck to do as far as content. So um, that's a little background about me. Uh, we got Joe on the line. We also have Allie. You can follow them on Twitter. Joe is at Joe Pop Brand. Allie's at Allie Whites. Is that how to say that last Nailed name? Nailed it. Nailed it. A-L-I-W-E-I-T-Z -E right yeah, down yeah. here. Yep. And then also uh, branded underscore sports. Make sure to go follow that. I'm assuming if you're watching this right now, you probably are. But just in case you're not, go ahead and smash that button. Um, all right. Uh, TheBrandedSports.com is the website you can find us on where we are constantly throwing out content throughout this quarantine to keep you guys entertained. So uh, let's get it going. So first topic, we're going to start a little series uh, or however you guys want to take it with Jay Glazer. So I'll set a little bit of background and I'll throw it over to Joe. So Tuesday, Jay Glazer announced he had big news. It was going to blow everyone's socks away. Nothing like we've ever heard before. Um, in typical Jay Glazer fashion, he decided to hold the information instead of release it right when he had it, which is, you know, red flag number one. Uh, ended up being uh, Ram center Brian Allen was the first NFL player to get coronavirus. Um, so, Joe, I don't know which direction you want to take it. You think uh, good, bad move? Uh, just, I guess. I, I was... I wasn't mad. I was disappointed because I actually like Jay Glazer. I think he's a good guy. I think he tries to be, you know, helpful and useful to the community and all that nonsense. But yeah. this was easily the most offended I've been in a long time because it's like everybody has a coronavirus. We know everybody has a coronavirus. And we're not talking about like an owner who's like 90 years old. Like if Jerry Jones had it it'd be bigger news because Jerry Jones is right in the demographic of like, if he gets it, Jerry Jones is cooked. Like he's right. dead <laughs> or like even a starting quarterback. That's pretty big news. Like a center, like an offensive lineman. Right. If you would have just gave me that name, I'd be like, I have no clue who that is, but Definitely. it's such a dickhead move to just like make everybody stay up. also to 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Now, it, <laughs> we're all in quarantine. So 11 o'clock is like really like seven o'clock now, but yeah. That's still, I mean, to make all of us wait just to be like, hey, this guy has coronavirus. And why did he? It just, I'm very upset. I don't understand why the center would be like, I'm going to tell Jay Glazer. Like, that's <laughs> the guy I want to tell. Like, tell your doctor, maybe tell your wife, your kids. Jay Glazer? It's absolutely yeah. insane. I was upset. Yeah. I was offended. I was. You think he thought offended. he got like the best scoop ever by like some a center on the Rams texting him that he had coronavirus? Like, did he send a mass text out to be like, "Hey, anyone got any news they want to share with me? Like, <laughs> news is light this week, and you got anything you want to send my way?" And somebody was just like, "Well, I do have corona," and he was like, "Breaking news: the internet's about like, to." Like, yeah, this up. this is gonna shut everybody down. Yeah, and then the follow up tweet being like this is not anything to do with the transaction. Like this has nothing right. to do with the player because it did kind of freak me out for a minute. Cause everyone's talking about Gronk coming back to play for the Bucks, <laughs> and everyone's like, is that what he's announcing? Like, is that what it's going to be? I was like nervous for a second there. And then he was like, no, it has nothing to do with any transactional play yeah. signing. It was I, insane. I assumed it was football is going to be back. Like, right. That's yeah. where I was at. Or it was going to be something like, Football's canceled for the year. Like all sports yep. are going to get canceled. It, it was going to be something huge, and then it was right. just like, oh, this like yeah. this guy has corona, and he's going to be absolutely fine. By the way, so it's like, so oh, cool. just to play the uh, devil's advocate here, do you think that it was a savvy media move by Jay Glazer to get people to watch his show during a time where there isn't any new content? Not saying that was the right or wrong move, but you know, as a media personality. We're talking about it. People are watching it. And maybe Brian Allen and him are like boys. And he's like, yeah, definitely. I don't care. I've, you know, this was happened three weeks ago, I think, from the video. So I'm just, you know, what do you think about that? I mean, 
if any one of you guys or any one of the bloggers watching, listening did this and drove in like a stupid amount of clicks because you held a stupid piece of information and everybody hated us afterward, I mean, I'd be fine with it. I'd be totally fine. <laughs> As a person who loves clicks. I know where you're going to go with that. So I don't know. You lost, I was, I was no, yeah, do, do, do it. Absolutely do it. But, but did anyone watch it? it? Like, I didn't watch his thing. I, I just thought yeah. on Twitter. I totally forgot. I missed it. Yeah. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting, especially Sean Payton already has coronavirus. So we already had that like shock and awe. So that's where like, and then the, the NFL, they're not gathered together practicing or anything. So there's really no, you know, uh, I guess like there's no impact right now. Um, Actually, you know what? The more I think about it, I'm now more upset with the center because okay. I like this. Yeah. I'm actually not mad at Jake Glazer anymore because now I th think about it, I would have did like the exact same thing. I would have somehow drove it to be like, we have big news. Check out yeah. Lunchables today at one. We're watching it. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, but Jay Blazer's already got a blue check mark. Not that big. Like, does he really need that? That's a good point too. No, it's, did you guys? Did you guys actually? Uh, so I I watched the video and this guy, it's poor Brian Allen. He hasn't had taste and smell for like three weeks. The doctor said it could be like three to five months before it comes back. It's like, yeah. man, that's that's brutal. Yeah, that's what the worst thing I, I think about the I, corona. So I see. I I go the other way. If if you take away my taste and smell, guess who is the healthiest eater you've ever met? <laughs> I would have a body like a god if you took right. away my taste and smell for like two months straight. Just yeah, all I mean, the I hate oatmeal. I want to like I try oatmeal <laughs> every year. I would just every morning eggs, oatmeal. Just I would be the healthiest human in the world, and then it would all get a shit once I got it back. And I was like, yeah, oh my god, I would crush them. Man, that'd be I don't know that'd be a mental toll. I think, but okay, so yeah. let's uh, let's pop over to uh, the next topic here. Um, so what this is about, I think, five weeks in for me in quarantine. Um, of course, everyone's, you know, out there living a healthy lifestyle, bettering themselves. But let's talk about some bad quarantine habits. I want to start with uh, Allie this time. What do you got? Well, I mean, honestly, this quarantine is not like drastically different from my everyday life. Like the only thing that's different is that I'm not sitting at my work computer for eight yeah. hours. So I haven't I don't think there's anything besides just like heavily eating that, that I've really <laughs> developed here. I will say I haven't worn contacts this entire time. So, and I just been staring at the screen. So my eyesight, it probably is like horrendous at this point. I think I yeah. should get oh, yeah. getting like a glasses partnership. Like I buy direct if they want to sponsor me. Um, so I don't know if I'll be able to see when this is over, but Joe, what do you got? Well, I mean, has anybody gone to bed at an appropriate time during any of this? Because like I, even last night, my wife was like, let's go to bed before like midnight tonight. No shot. So we're on to binge watching mind Hunter right now. So we're, we're crushing that. Um, I've, I drank, I drink every single day. That's something that is definitely like, I'm coming out yep. of this a worse person. I'm losing oh, yeah. weight because I'm not like really like, eating as much and, and lifting as much, but it's all bad weight. Like That's I'm, I'm losing about. weight. I want to keep and I'm gaining weight. I don't. You guys no, I'm gaining are going to come out of this. Belly. Belly. Well, Harry said yesterday no. he lost like 13 Yeah, pounds. I, I did not enjoy watching those three guys in that live stream. They're like, yeah, we just walk five miles on the treadmill, wake up at 545. I was like, what the heck is going on here? And then one, yeah. I, can't, I can't, sorry, I don't remember the guy's name, but he was like, yeah, you know, me and my wife, we take a break every hour. We do jumping jacks. We do push ups. I'm like, man, this guy's living the life. Like yeah. I, I imagine myself. Kevin sucks. Yeah. Kevin sucks. Yeah. Okay. We so, <laughs> so my bad quarantine habit is actually, uh, I've just basically turned into a Twitter troll now. I work from home. I'm bored. I, it all started all with, bad. you ever watched that, uh, or you ever see the Twitter account? I think it's like super 70 sports or whatever it is. Um, it's, no. uh, it's, it's just a Twitter account where it just basically just tweets like old school throwback pictures of like seventies, you know, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, good follow. And that started with, uh, there it was like on this day, back in the day, Hank Aaron passed, uh, Babe Ruth for the all time home run leader. So I was like, okay, this could be fun. This, the demographic that's following the seventies sports Twitter is probably the demographic that's going to fall for this little trap. And so I just threw in there that Hank Aaron was the first steroid user. He paved the way for Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire. And man, I got, I, I don't have a very modest following, maybe 300 people max, even less than that. 
and I got like five DMs. I got people coming at me like crazy. And I, I just, I just posted on a random Twitter account. It wasn't even theirs. And I, they, I couldn't believe it. Like they were calling me ridiculous names. I'm actually think I'm going to write up a little quick uh, blog about it just to post it in there and then kind of talk about yesterday go. where I, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And uh, so to talk about yesterday a little, I tried to I had a little fun with the the branded sports fans on the Twitter page. Had to uh, show my my Cowboys, you know, fandom out there. So that was uh, that was a fun one too. Everyone, n- no one could believe that I was actually born in the '80s. I guess I look very young. So everyone, my their, everyone's go to comeback was, if you didn't see a Super Bowl win, you're not allowed to talk about it. And so uh, I've, I had a lot of fun telling people that I actually witnessed three of five. So that was a so I'm basically just a Twitter troll at this point. It's kind of kind of sad. Well, we need one of those. I saw that tweet. Yeah, we do need one of those. I saw that tweet <laughs> and I knew it was going to be backlash because when yeah. when we first announced that we were working with um, Harry Mays and Aton Shander like last year or like twelve months ago, whatever it was. Yeah, Kevin had on a Yankees hat. And that's mm-hmm. all he had on was a Yankees hat. And I mean, he was getting dragged oh, all man. day. Just the comments, like one after another, like, you hang out with this Yankee trash. <laughs> I mean, they were dragging it. And it wasn't even like he highlighted it. He just so happened to have it on. It right. was great. Beautiful. Yeah. So it was fun yeah. to watch you get dragged, too. Yeah, that was fun. I, I knew it was coming, too. picture of me in, like, a Patriots shirt, Lakers hat, right. like, Yankees <laughs> mug or something. See what happens. You should get, like, a, a tri jersey. See, you, with, like, you get away <laughs> with it somehow. That'd be awesome. A, a Kobe a Kobe front, then half, like, a Yankees, half, like, Patriots. That's something. a good idea. I should get that. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. I don't, okay, I don't so, know how you get away with it, but you do. I don't think I get away with it. I'm not, I'm not like, obnoxious about the Yeah, that's probably it. The other two, I'd say I'm pretty obnoxious, but yeah. Well, well, if we ever had like a like a Sixers Lakers finals, I think that's when yeah, yeah. Oh, both yeah. worlds would collide and we'd have yeah. some issues. Yeah, for sure. Also, I think <laughs> if we had the playoffs this year and you just backing like standing LeBron, I think that would have got people riled up too. Yeah, I don't know if I would have been able to mentally do that. So <laughs> we don't have to find out. All right. I mean that. That's the biggest. That's the biggest um, storyline, basically, of the year is how can Allie support her Lakers but also hate LeBron at the same time. It's been okay. a, I know. it's been an interesting roller coaster ride. It's been a very big internal struggle since the like day he signed. So, and the only thing that was probably going to get me through it is if he just started winning championships. So, this whole quarantine is not great for me and LeBron's relationship. You and LeBron's relationship. Yeah. So what led to that LeBron hatred is just classic uh, everyone else. The reason why, like the um, with the yeah, I just, press conference like, and all that. I feel like especially being like such a big Kobe person, like the Kobe yeah. group and the LeBron groups are just very different people. Yeah, I feel so, like. So, I mean, like Kobe, I've never seen Kobe flop once. So. It's been a fun little underlying uh, part of the NBA season is to watch the Lakers fans try to figure out how to like yeah. react. Because last year it was like, well, Kobe's still better than LeBron because LeBron kind of stunk last year. Then now yeah. this year it's like, oh, well, maybe, it's, maybe, really maybe it's AD good. instead. Maybe he's the reason why. So that's it's been a fun little thing to watch. Yeah, so fun. All right. He better be playing well. He took off half the season last year. All right, so LeBron James. So we're speaking of mediocre players, let's go into the next topic. Uh so this one's kind of a uh, most of my answers here are homer, so a, a homer pick. So I'd be interested to see what you guys, you know, uh, what, who you guys pick. So is there a mediocre athlete that you still ride with, maybe like past, present, just for whatever reason? Um, Joe, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I mean, so Philadelphia, and I love you, Philadelphia. You're my favorite city in the world. And I've been here my whole life, and yada yada yada. But Philadelphia. Philadelphia fans are traditionally fans that love a good backup and love a good like underdog that just doesn't ever really get it done. Mm-hmm. So for us to find mediocre fans that we love, we don't you don't have to really go far. Like backup catchers, backup quarterbacks, those are Chris Coast loved in this town because he hit like one home run that was important. Um, but my like my favorite mediocre athlete that I will ride and die with is also obviously Philadelphia athlete was Jamie Moyer. That dude yeah. had like a five run ERA and he like those people forget like when he, when he went out, I think like his last year when he got injured and he tore whatever he tore, he like had like 19 wins by like July. Like all he would do is Cole Hamels would go out there. 
he'd he'd pitch a two earn run game after a two earn run uh, game, and he would get absolutely zero run support. Jimmy Moore has given up bomb after bomb, but for some reason those were the days that the Philly bats would wake up, so they'd win those games like nine to seven. But I just love Jamie Moore. He was the man. He was the only guy that was like close to his number. His number was like 45, and he was like 43 when he was out there just throwing 70 mile per hour fastball. So I love Jamie Moore until the day I die. That's a good one. I like that. Uh, I've, have you? I mean, I'm sure you've seen just the crazy Jamie Moore uh, stats. I think there's one about how like he when he retired he faced like 12 percent of all batters in all yeah. of Major League Baseball nine. or something more ridiculous like that. Nine nine percent of all yeah. Major League batters. Shout out Jack Fritz if you're listening. I think that was his tweet. And also we're trying to get yeah, you in the chip coming around Twitter. I saw that. Podcast, so please answer me back. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was wild. Nine percent of all batters in Major League history. I mean, that's just insane. That's just th- pure. Insane. Jamie Morris thrown a shutout in four different decades. I He's didn't been even the know oldest that. player That's on an insane. opening day roster six different times. <laughs> That's like those are stupid stats, stupid stats. But I love every one of them. That's why I'm you're just, Stevie yeah, Stat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the best one here. I'll uh, and we'll go to Ali after this. But after getting off to a poor start to his career, the Cubs encouraged Moria to retire and offered him a minor league coaching gig when he was in his twenties. <laughs> That's good. That's bananas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ali, what do you got? Mediocre yeah. athlete, you you still ride with? Well, at first I thought this was like a trap for somebody like wanting me to say that I think Wes Welker is mediocre, which is not true. So I'm not going to say that because I think he's yeah. a Hall I went to Texas player. Tech, so I'm a Wes Welker backer too, Great. so I got your back. Perfect. He um, still dropped that pass though. But you know what I mean? Yep, we've erased that. We've forgiven him for that. If you look at his numbers, um, he is a Hall of Famer, so I'm not going to go down that road and try to say he's mediocre. So my choice is um, Wally Zerbiak. I don't know if that's a big throwback. He never played on any of my teams, but when I was growing up and, like, first got into basketball and started, like, watching – my dad was a Knicks fan. I know, like – he just I just watched a bunch of different games. I never watched like only Celtics games. And yeah. once I saw Wally Zerbiak, I was in love. I had I remember when we were younger, you had to like put pictures and like decorate all your school books to like cover them. And I would just put like legit shirtless pictures of Wally Zerbiak. There's one that I had on like a lot of binders when I was like nine. So um that's a good one for me. Like great eyebrows, just like <laughs> beautiful guy. He's still he's still doing it too, like announcing and yeah love the guy i believe a uh, one-time all-star wally zerbiak yeah I, and he spelling was... his last name was like that's a challenge did you write that's... ali zerbiak with hearts over it all over your uh... i think i knew i didn't have a chance at that point with him <laughs> given i was about 10 years old so <laughs> you never know you never know that's funny but i will love wally zerbiak that's always one for me that gets the heart fluttering a little yeah it's a good one i like that <laughs> So for me, I have a couple. Uh, yeah, like I said, most of these are pretty homer picks. Uh, one, I don't know if he was kind of a random player back in the 90s. He played on the Rangers. His name was Kevin Mench. He had like the biggest head in the Major League Baseball. He had like a size eight head. He batted like 270, but I don't know why. It was just like, it was the perfect guy in the 90s, like kind of fat, big head, probably take steroids. Like, I don't know, he was just like my, he was like the perfect player back then. I don't, I don't know why, but I loved him so much. And then similar in basketball, uh, Rafe LaFriends, just the tall, goofy white guy that shoot corner threes. And then he's most known for messing up the Jay Williams elbow pass in the all-star game and not like finishing it. Uh, he, uh, he got fouled on it. So I, technically I guess it was all right, but yeah, it would have been nice to throw down a dunk. And then the last one is, uh, is Gabe Kapler. So I was a big Gabe Kapler guy. He played on the Rangers. He used to have a website called a Cap Lifestyle that I used to follow. It was like a very, like, before he became like a GM. And so he's kind of sucked at that too. So I'm hoping that he really kind of comes back and, and becomes like, he was supposed to be like this boy wonder, but I think he's just kind of he overwhelmed. Stinks. Yeah. He so oh, please, that's right. I didn't even connect that. Yeah. yeah sorry. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one then. Cause uh, yeah, he stunk with you guys. I mean, <laughs> two games in the last year, like he like didn't know like how to like do right. like, a double shift. I remember like, that or a double switch. It was just he <laughs> was gone. And I rooted for him because I really wanted him. I thought he was awesome. Obviously, yeah. dude's an absolute specimen, right. but he absolutely stuck it up. 
I forgot. Okay, that's a good one then. I, I was I had that down. I was like, I don't know if I sh- if they're even gonna have any like real emotion on this one, but I forget the the Philly uh, toss. That's sure, a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I always uh, just threw this in there. Do you remember uh, when Jan Vesely kissed his like really hot girlfriend in the NBA draft? I thought he was gonna be like a really good player, but it never, <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> I feel like we're good for like one to five of those a year. We're just ever yeah. have a really hot girlfriend. Yeah, it was uh, it was one of those like before Twitter kind of things. Like, oh, look at this. Okay. Still, the the best though is Brian Tannehill's. No, is Luca's oh, yeah. mom. Oh my god, Luca's mom yeah. makes no sense. Yeah. Hard twenty. Yeah. Yeah. She's unbelievable. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, so uh, let's hop into the last one here. Um, without sports, I've uh, been jumping kind of into the reality TV world. I think. Wednesday nights is a big night. I think uh, you got Survivor and the Challenge. I'm not sure what the Big Brother schedule is. Maybe, probably every day, right? That's kind of their thing. They stream. It's, ever, it's canceled. Oh yeah, that's right. The that's right. I forgot about that. Um, canceled it. Yeah. So, uh, what reality show would you want to be on, past or present? Um, we'll uh, save we'll, we'll save Allie to the end since she's our resident reality oh, yeah. TV expert. So uh, I'll I'll go ahead and start this off, and then I'll kick it to Joe, and then we'll have Allie uh, come in at the end for the for the save. Um, so my number one answer is MTV, the challenge. I think I would just be awesome on it. I think that would be the funnest one by far. Um, but that seems like an obvious answer. So I'm going to jump, I'm going to go into a little deeper in the bag. Um, cash cab. You guys remember that love, show? Love cash cab. Oh, yeah. I mean, cash cab. everyone loves that show. There's not, yeah, you'll yeah. never meet somebody that doesn't love that show. Exactly. Yeah. So cash cab, I think that would be awesome. Uh, just you know, stretch the trivia knowledge. Hopefully I got the right people in the car with me to help me out instead of, you know, lose your little brother, little sisters or whatever. Now would you, and then, uh, would yeah. you double down at the end? Oh, you got to double down at the end. Yeah, All right, yeah. Go. yeah. You have to. You can't just walk out with like a couple hundred bucks or whatever. You got to go. I probably would down. take the hundred bucks. Well, I mean, that because, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say it, but, you know. <laughs> and then uh, the last one is a little bit random, but I'm, I was a big American Pickers guy. You guys remember that show? Yep. I do. It was on a uh, history channel. Those like two weird older white guys would go around and like pick, pick uh, antiques. I don't know. It just looks like so much fun. You get out on the open road, go knock on a random, you know, farmhouse and be like, Hey, check out this Coca-Cola sign. Hey, what about this little, you know, Barbie doll? I don't know. That wouldn't seem you like a cool one. Do that. You should do that. Just by myself yeah. live streaming yeah. just <laughs> in the middle of a quarantine. <laughs> I mean, six feet away. Everybody has Venmo. You just yeah. leave it on the front yard and, all right, there we go. If we can, uh, anyone's out there looking for a uh, you know sponsor, we have a good idea here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, Joe, what do you got? Let's. I'm interested to hear this one. So, my obvious one would be Real World. Um, I feel like I would. I mean, I already have a headband on, so I feel like I would be a fantastic Real World contestant. Um, but probably like Real World, like somewhere in the range of like '97 to like 2002. I think that would have yeah. been my sweet spot. Not. At my current age, I would have been way too young. I would have been like in, I've been ten years old. So that would have been weird to have a ten year old in the house. But you know, if I was in that age range, put me on Real World in the late nineties. Um, yeah. The easy. I mean, you really don't have to do anything, and especially in the early ninety or the late nineties, like, right. If you like touched a boob, like that was like big time controversy. Now they're basically banging. So I think I could like I, I would be the bad boy. Um, I'd be like Theo before Theo or 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 what is his name what was the guy c t c t c c t c t yeah i be c t oh come on ali give give him a little history lesson here come on whatever but my other um my other or my favorite one of all of them was uh um the chick from philly when she was like i don't wrestle i beat bitches up i still say that to this day um but my other answer would be uh, pros versus Joes because I feel like I feel like I could physically dominate a, a ton of pro athletes. I already said I'm still waiting for. Um, don't look at me that way. I'm still waiting for Jordan <laughs> Jordan Poole to get a uh, Twitter account so he answered my challenge because I know I could beat Jordan Poole in a game of uh, horse. And I'm about to switch and pick another athlete who I know has one just so uh, I can you know challenge him as well. But I'm like, I'm faster than a lot. I know I can physically dominate plenty of pro athletes. So I think give me the opportunity on a uh, like platform. retired ones or doesn't matter. Retired, dead, alive, any of them. You know what I mean? I could dominate you know all the dead ones. I think you might. 
have that I, in the back. I shit all over Dennis. I would dunk <laughs> all over Wilt Chamberlain right now. You give me his urn, I'll kick that shit right over. So I think pros versus Joes would be, and that would be the most fun. You know, go out there. I used to love that show. So those are yeah, my, uh, those are my two. It's a really good one. Well, you want to talk about CT, first of all, and dominating professional athletes. People forget he oh, absolutely yeah. dominated T.O. in the most one of the more recent. Um, they do like champs versus stars, challenge people versus real life people. And he put T.O. in a body back on that thing. So, Ooh, really? oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Not it physically, was, mentally. Yeah, a mental body back. <laughs> um, but that honestly, like, I, you know, I've watched probably every reality show that ever exists. And my answer to it was going to be like a classic real world. I feel like that's like the core of reality TV. Everybody wants to be on the real world. The early seasons too, like they didn't have jobs. They started yeah. getting jobs as it went on. Like I think in the Vegas season, their job was like to work at a nightclub and be a dancer. So it was like, <laughs> jobs that were stupid anyway I would have crushed um, what i would have crushed that yeah like, sometimes absolutely. they had to work at like a ice cream shop or like it was always just something so stupid they had to work like three hours a day um so i i definitely would go classic real world seasons um and then my like fun pick is i think i would pick vanderpump rules um i can't imagine you guys are big vanderpump fans but these people on the show are like 38 years old like they're approaching their 40s and they still black out like every weekend there's a lot going on a lot of people like fighting they've all dated each other they've all like circled around the same group they're all in la just like working at this restaurant so i think that would be like a fun pick to be like someone on the side that wasn't really involved in any of it but got to like observe all of them being shit shows see yeah. i would i would love to do that i mean i don't think i could though i'm 31 or 32 now and i don't think i could black out every single i don't think i could black out every single week it yeah. would just ruin me. no and they and the thing is like they get up the next morning and they're like alive like they they're filming oh, yeah. and they're functioning. It's crazy. I, it defies the laws of science, in my opinion. Yeah, in, in that same vein, I thought about throwing Jersey Shore in there just to witness the shit show. That would, it's a classic answer too. Yeah, I feel so bad part. for that guy that owned that T-shirt. Like <laughs> poor, that poor guy. No, oh, they got a lot of business. I, think. I was gonna say he's probably nice and retired, retired now. Working. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, all right, so I think that is the end of uh, our topics here. Um, Ali, yeah, and if talk you about CT, are a challenge you person, else? if you're any reality TV person, um, you can catch my podcast, Avoiding Reality. Get the pun there because, like, Ali, A L I, that's the whole thing of it. <laughs> um, I recap, I've been recapping all the challenge episodes last night, it was an awesome episode. So, that's on Spotify and on Branded Sports. And, um, yeah, it's been a great season so far. I think they're, like, stepping up with a lot of the budgets on the challenges they're doing. They've, like, been in helicopters, <laughs> exploding bombs and stuff. So um, we saw it. CT Classic last night if you want to catch up yep. on CT. Not so, uh, so. so, Joe, you're going to have to sit this one out. We're going to do a little, a quick little post show here. So, uh, Allie, do you think the Johnny West, you know, partnership is legit? Or are we, uh, are we getting uh, snaked here? I think they're like bored at this point. I think it is kind yeah. of legit. I think they're just like, what else can we do? Like, honestly, I, I could do without either of them. I find them yeah. to be like so boring at this point. They're not adding anything to the show anymore. And they also like have a life. Like right, that was yeah, exactly. really bothering me. And I talked about it on my podcast, like Anissa. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck is Anissa's 38 years old? Get it's off great. The show. It's awesome. It's like a league minimum with just like the old school knee straps on, just like getting out there, getting yeah. it done. It's like she has nothing else, right? She lives in Philly. I think she's a stripper in Philly. So I don't know. Awesome. She's like, find something. Yeah. And she's I, looked in up, Philly still. I looked up, um, and I did a like a breakdown of the people who've won the most money from this show, the top 10. I was like, oh, Anissa yeah. has to have won some like no, pretty good money never, on no. this show. She's been on for 20 years. She's no. won $24,000 yeah. in that yeah. long of time on the show. Yeah, she's never won a final. It's what the uh, what number one's probably uh, Ashley Mitchell at the it top. Is. Yeah, she's yeah. the only millionaire. She's yeah, a millionaire a Mitchell. Yeah, she got the. Yeah, I'm a I'm a challenge nerd. I'm I geek out on this stuff. I don't know. It's uh it's my one guilty pleasure still. <laughs> it's fun. I mean the cha like yeah. I said the challenges this season have been like a little better than just like 
a trivia yeah. contest or something. They've had actual, and that's what I said to the final on this season. I feel like is going to be insane. Yeah, I mean the what the first World of Worlds was. That final was unbelievable. Oh, crazy. Yeah, the, that was. I mean, I don't even know how they completed it. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's why I didn't pick that as my show because I would never want to do half of those things. <laughs> they make them like stand on a square box. Oh for, like, yeah, eighteen hours. They can't sleep. Like they just stand there. Like my would, knees would give out on this after running a half marathon. Basically, I'm, absolutely, <laughs> I'm now convinced I would win this. There's just no way I would mentally or physically break. I love it. You yeah, need any of these people? You got to like, watch it. All right, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch you gotta, it. You gotta hop in. Hop in from like a uh, more monster. Hop in from like a War of the Worlds one. Like if you want to like get a little backstory of the current cast, or just jump into the season. It's good. Yeah, or you can watch my video. Everybody, I broke down the whole. There, the there we go. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I think everybody should go watch it. So check out the video. Also, Allie, real quick before we go, did you call your mom? Oh yeah, I saw yeah, that. I, Lori. Call I called my mom. friend Lori because of that. It was like, hey, call Lori. <laughs> I I did that. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I'm shocked she hasn't commented yet, but yeah. maybe she's very busy right now. Um, <laughs> she, was, she was worried I was mad at her for doing that. So. Ah, oh, never. That was good. Never. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, appreciate it, guys. Hey, uh, thanks for having me on, Joe. Uh, hopefully, I'll pop up in some more content. Allie, Absolutely. if you want to chop up on the challenge, let me know. I'll yeah, call, I'll call in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Remember, uh, fo follow everybody on Twitter. Check out the website. And uh, appreciate you guys watching. Do you guys have hitchhiker thumbs or regular thumbs? Can you do this? I think just a regular. I think it's just regular.